What's up Tube Tube? Welcome to Lo Guido's Chop Shop, the second best gel blaster tube on the tube tube. Now, in front of us here is my FMG9 gel blaster. Now there's a lot to unpack here, um, no pun intended. I made this gel blaster and YouTube and the mainstream media have a real hard-on against 3D printed guns. Now this is not one of those. This is a 3D printed gel blaster, mostly, uh, but it is based off of a FMG9, which was a concept uh, produced by Magpul a number of years ago, which was never produced and therefore it is a replica of a concept that didn't exist but it was popularized by video games such as Modern Warfare and Rainbow Six. There was a, a lot of popular video games that had this FMG uh, in it and thus it was quite popular. In fact, it, when I used to play Modern Warfare, it was the, like the Akimbo FMG9s were so OP, everyone used them and it was almost embarrassing. Um, but I really liked it and I wanted to build myself one but I do this YouTube thing and I know that before I've even made this video it's already demonetized because of the fact that the mainstream media have such a just got such a vendetta against 3D printing guns and I know that you might have read the uh, title where I, where I said they're not real. Well, they, they obviously are. They're, they're real. Um, however, they're a lot less real than I think the media will have you believe because the line that they sell to everyone, including myself, is that anyone can own a 3D printer and anyone can essentially print this at home and potentially make something dangerous that they could cause harm with. And uh, well, yes, that is, I guess, technically possible. One thing that I've learnt during the process of building this is that not everyone can go out and buy a 3D printer and print one of these. Uh, I mean, or, or, or a real gun. This is obviously a gel blaster. But, um, yeah, there's, there's so much more so much more. Um, I guess if I was to try and cut a long story short, the, the easiest way to describe it is that you're actually printing a plastic handle for your action that already exists because uh, you can't print a metal barrel, you can't print ammunition, you certainly can't print gunpowder. And um, there's a lot of stuff that you just can't print in the world of real firearms that that essentially you would need to get elsewhere to and and there's skills and knowledge that are required that basically would make it easier to obtain a real firearm than it would be to 3D print one. Um, the other thing is that in just making this gel blaster, I've learnt that there is you need you need to be very good you need to have a certain set of skills not just every single person can go out and print something and have it work i mean there is a lot of trial and error let me just let me just uh let me just give you an idea This is just like some of the parts that I made that just didn't work or didn't fit or needed adjustment or broke or th there's, <laughs> it's, there's a lot of learning to do here. And I mean, if someone was to go to the trouble of learning all this, all these skills and, and putting it together, then yes, it's 100% plausible and possible, but it's not really within the reach of your average 
basic human being. There is a lot, a lot of knowledge that you would require. There's a lot of uh, finishing, filing. You would need to essentially know how to build uh, a firearm in the first place before you could even begin to start 3D printing parts for it. It just, it's not really viable for the average person. The people who do 3D print are doing that because that's their hobby, I guess. They're, they're into it for that reason. And even if you did successfully 3D print something, it's just not going to last because this is plastic. And even with a gel blaster under periods of abuse, after a while it's going to break. And so, I mean, I don't think outside of like the hobby aspect of it, I don't think there is a real legitimate way for people to genu genuinely print firearms. Gel blasters is a bit different because they're toys and, and they don't cop as much abuse and they don't have anywhere as near as much power. But like, um, I just needed to address that elephant in the room because YouTube's probably already demonetized this video by now. Um, so, I, yeah, I, I just don't see the way that mainstream media paint this as uh, I don't see that to be accurate at all. There is there is a lot of learning and I mean I'm not a noob. I know a thing or two about a thing or two and even for me big learning curve lots of mistakes. It's taken weeks weeks and weeks to uh, print design learn build finish like there is a lot of a lot of work just to get something that's functional um, so anyway I digress now that I've got that out of the way let's take a look at this FMG 9 part of the reason that I am a little bit proud of this uh, FMG 9 is because of the amount of uh, design and um, fabrication that I've had to do to get it to work. This isn't something that you can just get a file and download and print and have it work uh, as the media will have you believe. This isn't something you can just download and, and off you go. If you like, this is there, there has been a lot of my own personal design going into this, and to this day, it's probably still not a hundred percent, but it is, um, it is pretty good it's close but I, I there's a few things that I'd like to fix up and it's probably got you know a, a little little bit more finishing to do maybe 10% but here it is and um, probably the first thing everyone wants to know is does it fold obviously it does fold you can see it's folded and does it uh, how does it you know open up well uh, <laughs> I've got a little I've got a little montage for you on that one here. Now this uh I've I've based this off of an APS gel blaster just because they were um you know, relatively good and reliable, and I had a number of them. I had a number of spares uh, kicking around, so that's what I've based this off of. Uh, it does run off of CO2, but I have got a HPA um, adapter here for for the purposes of testing and stuff like that. And um, I will actually, there's the, uh, the mag ejecting there. Um, there's a button here to fold that and that all folds up. There is also uh, enough space inside to fit a, an extension, an extended mag as well. So um, you can fit that in when this folds. So there's enough space there to fit the full extended mag. 
Uh, I've just got the short one here at the moment. A lot of the work is, is also finding springs and parts that fit. Uh, so I spent a lot of time searching for springs and stuff, but um, there is a button up here that also got springs. I will pop that open so you can see inside. You can see the APS. This is a Black Hornet that I've based it on and I've based it on the Black Hornet because of this switch here. Uh, if you were going to do the FMG9, I feel like it just had to have it, had to have that switch and I didn't want to build it without it. I did originally start designing it um, around the XTP because I had heaps of them spare, uh, which is very, very similar, although there are enough differences that it wasn't it wasn't going to work like it wasn't fully uh, compatible to swap from the XTP to the um, to the Black Hornet, so I had to redesign stuff for the Black Hornet as well. Uh, again, I can't go into a whole lot of detail about what I did and how I did it because of YouTube and their terms and conditions. So um, let's just. Let's just see it go. So I've got the charging handle here. That uh, racks the slide inside. Let's, uh, let's see it operate. Okay, so aside from being incredibly difficult to aim because I don't know where the barrel is because <laughs> of the way the front of the thing is, um, yeah, average of 300. It is running on HPA, so I mean, it is adjustable with the pressure. Um, <laughs> I did, when I initially tested it, it was like about 400 psi. Uh, it's not 400 psi, 400 fps, so I did have to tone it down a bit. Um, so let's drop down to around about 300 now. Oh my gosh, that is so satisfying. Um, I don't know, there's a certain satisfaction, not just from the pops and clicks, but knowing that, uh, I, I built it. Um, it's just a little bit more satisfying. Um, speaking of what I built, I, back on my... 3D printed rant. Um, let's look at the things that I didn't build. Obviously, the magazine. Did not build the magazine. Um, did not print the slide. So, the slide and the barrel and all, all of this, all off the shelf APS components. Um, inside here, all of this trigger bar, chassis, um, hammer grouping, all of this off the shelf components. And I guess that kind of brings me back to my uh, 3D printed rant in, in that it really does show you, I guess, the, the, the point that it is just basically a 3D printed plastic handle for a product that already exists, I guess. And um, the plastic handle in itself is, is, is a little bit special for the FMG9 because of the folding aspect. Um, that bit itself is a little bit hard to uh, replicate. Also the springs, um, there is a spring that's supposed to drop this trigger down, but uh, I haven't found a spring that's perfect 
just yet, so the operation of that is not 100%, but it should, oh, there we go, just popped out of place. So that should, when you bring that down, the trigger should pop back into place. Again, same with this, this should pop in and lock, but finding springs to pop that in and make it lock. All part of the game. Now, um, you may notice the uh, uh, the barrel. I've left a little bit of stick out on the barrel. Nope, probably probably shouldn't have folded it up before trying to attempt to put the slide on. Um, you may notice the barrel here has a bit of stick out. Um, I've intentionally left a little bit of stick out there and that's so that uh, I can fit a hop up into there. Um, if I want to which I no doubt will want to at a later stage, there's enough space there for me to pop a hop up in there. Uh, and that's why there's that little bit of stick out plus a little bit of extra space. That's why I didn't go full length all the way to the end. Um, all right, I think that should Just about cover it. I think that should I think that should cover it. I think that's probably about all I'm willing to say without getting myself too banned. <laughs> there it is. Thanks for watching. Don't forget you can buy me a coffee in the link below or you can buy a patch by contacting me at Face page, Low Guido's Chopters. <laughs> Just one little last word on the uh, on the 3D printed bit before I go. Because with a 3D printer, you can pretty much make anything awesome. Awesome. Peace.